Paul, complete this 50s sci-fi premise. Five nearly identical white astronauts and a girl go to a strange planet and discover... That the dance was in them all along. Oh, it's an empty planet. (laughs) And they were like, we have been told that this is the location of the dance. (laughs) And they get there and it's like, but there's nothing here. That old man lied to us. Bimmy, I've got an idea. (laughs) My God. (laughs) Holy shit, Jimmy! You've rotated the core! (laughs) The planet's moving again! (laughs) Here, have my wives. What'd you bring those for? <laughs> Came on this journey to discover the origins of funk. <laughs> well, we need a reward. <laughs> need a bit of crumpet. <laughs> Thanks, Paul Whitehouse. Here, gentlemen, my sexy daughters. <laughs> One for each. <laughs> what does they do? An elaborate dance. How elaborate? <laughs> Not that elaborate. <laughs> husbands for all of you. I'm Paul Husband. I'm yours by the law of Atlantis. <laughs> oh, what was that, what was that caveat? <laughs> Take Mon- me, I'm yours by the laws of Atlantis. <laughs> really kills that bone bone. <laughs> do you take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. <laughs> by the laws of the Atlantis. We always give him that space and we just shouldn't let him answer. Just shouldn't let him follow up on that line. <laughs> You've got to cut her off. <laughs> Do you love me, darling? I do, but anyway, let's go over to this picnic <laughs> area. Have this apple! <laughs> <laughs> so, we are halfway through our latest series of depraved experiments, and so it's time to get back down the history hole. <laughs> and the history hole, all the way back to 1956, the same year as the Conqueror. Truly, this is a year that was most generous to the Kinema. <laughs> Le Kinema. Le Kinema. Kinemero. Bors- Bon cinema. <laughs> it's fire maidens from outer space. What? But where? <laughs> okay, let them have it. Bullets have no effect. I'll try a gas grenade. Here on the 13th moon of the planet Saturn are atomic forces that control the tides of all earthly desire. Within the moon's temple of love, dwell the fire maidens of outer space, dedicated to the purpose of creating a new race of supermen and holding captive all who fall under their spell. But theirs is a moon-mad evil love that makes victims of their own kind and puts them to the fearful ordeal by fire. Apparently British production, directed, produced, written, and storied by an American man, Cy Roth. <laughs> With a lovely signature. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Critics reacted to this film like finding alien life forms. Mild interest. <laughs> and a hope for sexy women. Somewhere. <laughs> We've discovered alien life. Can I fuck it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> I don't much like blondes. <laughs> oh, forget it then. Back to Jupiter. <laughs> The Unknown Critic. <laughs> Have you ever gone to the tomb of the Unknown Critic? It's quite, it's quite <laughs> breathtaking, really. But an unknown critic for the monthly film bulletin wrote, Even the most dedicated connoisseurs of the artless... I like if, if ever there was a title designed for us. <laughs> Even the most dedicated connoisseurs of the artless are likely to find this British attempt at science fiction something of a strain on their patience. Imagine that, a British attempt at science fiction. Never heard such a thing, and I refuse to in all future situations. (laughs) Oh, darling, should we go and fight the Empire? Awfully chilly out. (laughs) It's a bit rainy. Why don't you just fuck off back to where you came from, then? (laughs) You fucking foreign bastard. You go back to (laughs) Dantooine. Anyway, uh, Phil Hardy, writing in his book, Science Fiction, a bit of a broad 
thing he set himself there. <laughs> it's a 10,000 page book. He says, the film's one claim to fame is that its extensive use of classical music, mostly borrowed in, as background music. Yeah. A trick that Stanley Kubrick deployed with far more aplomb in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah, I don't think you really need to have gone that far <laughs> to have ins- to have called this pointless, really. <laughs> I think you could have come a bit closer to home. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed Billy's year two story about the dog that he found on <laughs> holiday. Um, I enjoyed it, his description of its fur. Having said that... <laughs> can't help but feel that Dostoevsky uh, <laughs> might have employed his signature polyphony to really explore the social and religious context of this encounter with the dog you saw on holiday. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am going to give it a smiley face. Now remember everything that I've said, Billy. <laughs> and why you're shit. <laughs> you haven't even got big balls. <laughs> I have, look. <laughs> look at them. Look how big they are. Look at them bounce. you got nothing. You give it most of the idiot on these. I can and have. <laughs> Look closely. <laughs> I hate this school. It's so literary, but just in the worst way. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a Marquis de Sade novel. Novel? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I was also going to say Marquis de Sade. Good, we're on the same page. <laughs> novel felt wrong. Why? He wrote, he wrote novels. I guess he did, yeah. I feel like novel in my head is something that, you know, you read on holiday now. It's not <laughs> what the great literary mass Manuscript! <laughs> you don't go to Dubai and read Oliver Twist or <laughs> Menorca. Well, do you? Actually, that would be quite appropriate. <laughs> go to Dubai and read Oliver Twist and really get inside of the fucking headspace of what that country represents. I mean, you can and should, but do you? Is it even allowed? Will, one day. We all read, that's the name of my autobiography, is reading Dickens in Dubai. <laughs> Dickens in Dubai, it's cool. <laughs> it's got a very strong audience that I don't approve of. Anyway, the public were no less likely to lob gas grenades at the film. Ice H on Amazon said, now this is long, but it has to be. Interpreted in an American cultural context, however, the monster is an uncanny premonition of the current president of the United States. (laughs) I wonder if he will have a mattress underneath when he falls. With him and the likes popping up everywhere in politics these days, the question is, if we are changing the planet fundamentally... I do feel sometimes I am on another planet, considering the recent historic events, especially in the United States of America. The monster has to be defeated in the myths of the human mind of old. Nowadays, it is the monster that is triumphing, and the good food soldiers happily join in the spread of barbarism. A culture that expresses itself in in the irritating form of this film is bound to be doomed. In history, arrogance, incompetence, stupidity, and barbarism had had a very high price. Empires rise, empires fall. Who is being made the fall guy? This time, it seems the planet itself. And all that creepy crawls, including us. How stupid have we all become? How cowardly? How small? How deluded? How insensitive? How inhuman? At least, and hence the one star, we witnessed a happy end. The alien became friends with the alien. Yep, that's what that says. A painful note. A positive note. In this painful disaster of a film. Very good. When did you write that? (laughs) I wrote it for Screen Mayhem. I saw it last (laughs) week. I can't help but feel he had other things on his mind. <laughs> I didn't think you were watching the film. <laughs> I thought you were just checking Reddit, but clearly you were working on something. And the special effects were rubbish, very much like my marriage. And what is marriage nowadays, anyway? <laughs> it seems to be just a generally convenient relationship between two people for tax purposes. It does not like it old days and my father's days, anyway. Uh, also, Frank Langella was very good in it. <laughs> <laughs> you could deconstruct it down to completely arbitrary gender roles, really. But um, you know, but where, where does that get you? And you know, in, in a way, that is a lot like <laughs> RoboCop 2. Arbitrary gender roles, the movie. <laughs> oh, fuck me. The film is considered one of the worst ever made. So, Paul, you earthling. Rawr. What's one thing about the Fire Maidens from Outer Space? Did I say its title earlier? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Good stuff. I don't know why I've written it as outer, like in the street sense. O-U-T-A-T-T-A? <laughs> outer. <laughs> What's one thing about Fire Maidens from Outer Space that made you want to fly it into London Airport? <laughs> Well, I think uh, beginning the movie with the the credit directed by, and then it's Cy Roth's signature. Yeah. It it gives it a very, uh, it's a prestige piece by (laughs) legendary filmmaker Cy Roth. Did you feel there was an autorial voice there? Oh, I would maybe go as far to say maybe. (laughs) <laughs> oh Christ! You're gonna go that far? Fucking hell! You're leaving it all in the oh. you're leaving it all in the ring today. <laughs> Scraping balls off the ropes for weeks. <laughs> all right, Paul. What happens in that there fire maidens from outer space? The two great nations of the United States and Great Britain. Really? Is that is that what it says? <laughs> okay. Of United States and Great Britain. Is that, you, you sure it's meant to be Great Britain? Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> they are joining to 
uh, to defeat Preg's in... expedition. Uh, <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't go well. <laughs> um, they, they built a rocket to take them to the 13th moon of Jupiter, so I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> Yeah, the quick mu- escape. The music starts, and if you squint your eyes, perhaps you're watching an MGM musical or a 50s spy thriller, not the Fire Maidens <laughs> from Outer Space. <laughs> An, an American scientist teams up with Jared Harris. And, um... <laughs> they're, they're getting together to do all kinds of smoking. And um, <laughs> whilst they're there, they look for a telescope and see a world, a 13th moon on Jupiter that looks an awful lot like Earth. And according to the speculation of Tron, it has uh, a similar atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. Once we reach outer space, three weeks. You know, uh, there could be humans on that planet. Stop kidding, though. You're a scientist. It's probable, but highly doubtful. Beings? Yes. A 50s-style woman slowly comes down the stairs, goes <laughs> through two tiny gates, and then appears out of nowhere, apparently. So good. <laughs> so good. And then she sits, she sits down, she dictates half a sentence, and then she gets up, <laughs> go, um, puts the chair back under the desk uh, across the room, goes back to the tiny gate, opens it, goes through it, closes it, locks it, walks up the stairs and the camera follows her along the gangway all the way out of the scene. <laughs> and then um, five minutes later, um, it cuts back to the two men and they go, <laughs> oh, wish my wife was like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the life forms we find out there were going to be anything like her. You can't fuck them this time, Dave. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> oh, I was just... Uh... <laughs> I'm definitely gonna. <laughs> Gee whiz, I sure am gonna fuck whatever we find. <laughs> Dave. Why do we keep... We've got to stop Dave. We've got to find something else. <laughs> I, who was it we well, had well, for a while? There was there was a name. Barry. Like, Barry. Oh, Barry's so we're, much better. We're always to... going to marginalise someone though, with with any name. <laughs> we just say Paul. We could just say Paul. It is pretty shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you're not going to shit on another child, are you? <laughs> not like you always do, Paul. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so a bunch of Pauls are in a fucking uh, spaceship. Identical Pauls. <laughs> There's five Pauls. There's Paul. Paul. Paul, oh. Paul, and Paul. And, <laughs> and Paul. They sit there making various jokes about their wives. Well, one of them says, I hope we find some good biological and geological samples. He says like a fucking pervert. I've been ready for weeks, Blair. Hope I can bring back some good geologic and biologic specimens. <laughs> I don't know how, but he's like, it just makes it sound like yeah. the filthiest thing you've ever heard in your life with his eyebrows and his face. <laughs> I, hope this, I hope this rocket's a lot like my secretary. He's a sexy bitch. <laughs> I hope that this uh, this rocket here is uh, like several prostitutes in the East End, and that I've come in it. <laughs> you know it is, <laughs> Paul. Oh, I hope it's not. <laughs> it is. Oh. <laughs> mm, it is. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, oh, it is. All the all the Pauls <laughs> just rejoining in here. They 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 get to the thirteenth. What was that? the shit out of now, me what was that is that is, is that, that roof work is that audible <laughs> <laughs> oh paul oh paul oh no roof? <laughs> fuck me i mean if this is just gonna carry on now this is not gonna work Me. Uh, me too. I thought the fucking roof was falling in <laughs> because of Jesus. <laughs> Only had to get sick of this shit at some point. Oh god, <laughs> it's been going on a while. I mean, we can keep we can keep trying. Okay, man. He's got a hammer out now, so we'll see. Oh, that's that's more manageable. Um. Oh, yes, the, God. The, the astronauts leave the incredibly well signposted missile silo that they've got. They're, then they're in they're in west they're in sort of rural England on the thirteenth moon of Jupiter. Yeah, yeah. They fly for an asteroid thing and spend what? Uh, what is it they say? Three weeks or three months? 
getting there. Yeah, there's a bit of a montage. They eat a sandwich. They eat a sandwich. It keeps them going. Yeah. It's great. Um, <laughs> oh, that's hiding me over. They they begin their descent towards the planet, at which point a voice starts speaking to them. Mm-hmm. And it's just, holy fuck, alien life! Ah! <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Paul. It's saying something. It's telling us to, to go to these coordinates. Oh, those, co- those coordinates don't make any sense. Oh, how weird. Well, anyway. That's mildly annoying. <laughs> They land and uh, they're accosted by... They take off in reverse over a picture of some trees. (laughs) (laughs) It's wonderful. (laughs) The men decide that they've had enough fresh air and decide to light up a cigarette before they check the atmosphere of the planet (laughs) they've landed on. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm just breathing too clean these days. Paul, give me one of them smoky boys. (laughs) Hope it's going to do what my wife refuses to do. Touch my balls. (laughs) Finally kill me. Um... (laughs) Um, yeah, the five scientists, the five Pauls, um, they leave their ship and find a humanoid statue, uh, make a yeah. vaguely harassing comment about it. And then, and then remark that they've, woof, woof. <laughs> they remark they've never seen anything like this. It's made of copper or something. <laughs> it's real. <they> say. <laughs> One of the remarks, then- it's getting late. For what? <laughs> it's an alien world. You just found examples of a human life form and you just heard a scream. They fucking go to... Yeah, they, they find a woman being harassed by a beast man. <laughs> and and uh, they fucking... Best moment... Uh, second best moment of the movie for me. They try to scare it off with a gunshot. Yeah. And all, it's, all it achieves <laughs> is causing the beast to stop what it's doing and just glare at the men. And the, wom- the woman too. They both sort of just stop what they're doing. Just sort of... Ah, ah. What <laughs> yeah. the fuck? They both look in the direction of the astronauts. Prolonged silence. It's great though because he sees this and he says, "We mustn't get involved. Just fire a warning shot." (laughs) Yeah. Oh, never mind that. Just shoot it. (laughs) Shoot the cunt. (laughs) So yeah, and then they save they save the woman, I guess. They do well. She runs off, and they sort of pursue. (laughs) I'm so glad that these are the men representing Earth and Paul. These (laughs) Pauls and the name Paul. Um, they they come to like a a temple or or like the city, which Mm. the woman has shown her entrance to, (laughs) and you know the the head Paul. (laughs) He's he's like to his second in command. Look, you three wait here. I'll go on with the second Paul. Buzz Aldrin, one, two, uh, and three. (laughs) If we're not back in uh, in, what is it, twenty minutes, an hour, whatever, eight to sixteen months. If we're not back in that time, uh, just go back to the ship. Why don't we just go back to the ship? <laughs> what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do here? Like we won't hear anything that goes on. Why don't we just go now? I don't know. I just thought would it be nice to walk together. Oh, <laughs> oh, all right. I mean, yeah, you know, I hadn't really just... thought of that. No, no, that's no, fine. You go. <laughs> I mean, no, uh, yeah, you can go if you like. I mean, no, no, it's it's, it's a good idea. I like it. Actually, we you all know? like it. Actually, well, actually, yeah. You sure? You don't have to. Look, just fuck go, Paul. <laughs> It's not easy for me you know, to be the lead pool. Look, I haven't had a crew before. And the, I don't know what know, I'm doing. The last, last crew I was in, it was, you know, pretty awkward. I just wanted to make an effort. Yeah, They're all women. It. We all Couldn't respect it. a single one of them. <laughs> no respect. No, no one <laughs> at all. So Rodney Dangerfield goes on. <laughs> um, they meet a fucking, uh, aside from the woman, who again is on an alien planet on Jupiter. <laughs> they've asked surprisingly few questions of her. They meet Torgo. <laughs> <laughs> they meet the fucking guide. Welcome to New Atlantis. I'm happy you've arrived safely. My name is Process, the lone male survivor of Atlantis. She was my mother's mother. Be seated, gentlemen. Do they have an iffy feeling about? Buzz Aldrin 1 says to the other, uh, and you guys like this in the war. No, you didn't! This guy's <laughs> from Jupiter! Who did you know in the war who was like this guy? <laughs> the Germans. <laughs> tell us your plans. I shall tell you my plans. <laughs> typical typical oh, German. Oh, goddess of Atlantis. <laughs> my favourite cutaway sh- in cinematic history. <laughs> if only we'd seen it in our edit episode. <laughs> Their, their oh, new God. Atlantis, basically, is, is the big reveal. Um, or yeah. as the French say, Le Revel. Merde. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Genghis Khan gets mentioned, and as if by magic, an awkward dance scene is summoned. (laughs) More of that to come. Yeah, the daughters of um, Manos or whatever the fuck, they start dancing so the astronauts can have a bit of an ogle. And in a very refreshing change of pace for a 50s movie, uh, the men get harassed. (laughs) They get drugged and then fondled in their sleep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all good and all good fun. All just the friendly laws of Atlantis. 
<laughs> long may they rain. of Atlantis, I did do stuff to you in your sleep. So, <laughs> so I think, meanwhile, the three guys back at the spaceship wonder what the fuck's been going on for the last yeah. four years. Yeah. And <laughs> they go out and they find the monster again. <laughs> it's another case of exactly the same of just, hold your fire. Um, let's just try and scare it away by firing. <laughs> oh, it's not working. Okay, just shoot it. <laughs> they start shooting at it again. It's just pretty much the same. It's an it's another hard cut to the beast going. What the fuck? <sighs> I mean, sh- hi. <laughs> oh wait! Oh wait! <laughs> I don't get this. I'm gonna go get a salmon. Follow it and shoot it. Can't wait to see how this escalates. <laughs> the men, I, the men at this stage, the people who are the two Buzz Aldrins who went into the camp. Nothing happens to them really. One of them falls in love with a local girl. The other manages to hold on to his virtue. Um. <laughs> Because he's got a wife and two full-grown kids. <laughs> two full-grown children. As if that has anything to do with why you should cheat on someone or not. <laughs> They're fully grown. Think of, think of my full-grown children. So, <laughs> yeah, so he, he that that happens. Meanwhile, outside, the men sort of, I think they see another girl, and one of them asks, what if she's the only one? Well, you're last in the queue, or something like that. <laughs> it's something grace. Hey, what if she's the only one? In that case... You're last in line. You'll get to fuck it last. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me. But luckily for them, there are many women for them to pass around. They really are. The men and folk. They, they see them over a wall, and they start scheming about how to get in, and they're like, okay, we'll build a ladder and climb over. over. And if the girls attack, no, 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 we're doing this wrong. What was the end of that sentence? <laughs> what do you do if the girls attack? <laughs> <laughs> well, scare them off with a warning shot, I assume. <laughs> no, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Open fire <laughs> with your fucking <laughs> shooters. It should be pointed out that the incredibly sophisticated piece of hardware these men have brought with them are like gangster six shooters. <laughs> A Walter PPK. <laughs> the chased man, Sir, Sir Lancelot. He is um no, who was um the one that Michael Palin played? Galahad. Yeah, that was it. Sir Galahad. He's trying to get out of his room by holding a yeah. glass against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> In the end, I think the secret door just gets sick of it and opens for him. Um, except well, that it turns out it's linked to the chairs. So God yes. help us if a guest ever moves one of the chairs. D- yeah, decides to push the chair back. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't occurred to any of our prisoners yet. Just, What's going you... on? <laughs> <laughs> what are the girls doing? What's like the sinister goings on? Oh, I I just do not know, but they have to escape. Yeah, I think they've um, captured oh, it's, them it's because... to breed, right? They want to keep the men hostage Probably. so that they can mm. all get preggers. Poor bastards. So they <laughs> have to... Um, but they, but they, they capture the one who has been gifted to the lead pool. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, they capture her because she wanted to leave with the men folk. They, they, they tie her to a bit of stone and they do another dance. Um, Fuck yeah. One of them, leaning against a, po- a pole, suddenly starts just twirling and doing things and... <laughs> Eventually they go, Sharon, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I was just exp- expressing myself for the goddess of Atlantis. Yeah, well, don't. This is a sitting thing, not a <laughs> yeah, dancing yeah, thing. Back yeah. in line, you. <laughs> I was trying to show off in front of the goddess. Dancing Sandra. Two of the men. Oh, the, yeah, they've managed to capture the three men who are outside. The sure. other two men, having escaped from their, their incredibly impeccably designed prisons, they um they miraculously, supernaturally managed to ensure it where their guns are behind a small bit of wall. <laughs> just That's unbelievably find those. That's that's that pull tuition you hear about. He he comes out. He finds the the sort of location. Uh, somehow they hear that the other men have been captured, mm. and it's like I thought I told them to go back to the ship. Yeah, that was a year ago though. <laughs> it was ages. <laughs> that was an entire lifetime ago. <laughs> so meanwhile, Clive the monster is um just hanging about in the woods. Yeah, we should we should describe Clive. He's a guy in a tracksuit wearing a <laughs> Halloween mask. Yeah, it just about does it. He's the beast. <laughs> oh, and he shows up? Yeah. Well, he kills He kills Gus, the high priest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's at this stage I started to name people. He <laughs> killed Torgo. And, yeah, there's some excellent editing and Clive falls into a fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, is he going to be misunderstood or there be something unforeseen or twisty about... Oh, no, he's dead. No, nah, fuck it. They use another gas grenade. It's yeah. a good thing they're gas grenades. <laughs> um, and then... The women just kind of make peace with yeah. the lead chick like oh sorry about trying to sacrifice you well she's queen now would, cause... You, would you like your shoes oh, I do like it when you give me my shoes <laughs> I do <laughs> love having shoes as a queen one of the astronauts reports oh Gus is dead we just found his torn up body that's fine 
We all kind of thought of him more as a friend, to be honest. <laughs> and, and and with that, they go, you are, you are now our new queen, the person whose name I didn't bother to learn in this in this film. And, <laughs> and she goes, I'm going to Earth to be with the men folk. They've told me yeah. great stories of this place. I, I foresee good things. And, uh, and they go, yeah, oh, but we want to get fucked by lots of men. And the men go, <laughs> don't worry, sweethearts. There are plenty more where we came from. <laughs> I, we're going to come back with more scientists. <laughs> oh. hmm. So the space spaceman number four makes a pop culture reference that's that is as lost to me as it must be to these fucking aliens he has encountered. Please, girls, one at a time. Just your names. I have the facts. It's always worth pointing that out again. <laughs> and they they get in the spaceship and they take off forward this time, and. Yeah, the end. It was Earth all along, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. You know, either. Yeah. You're not going to check. Oh, uh, the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, what did you think of the Fire Maidens from Outer Space? Oh, it's very, very silly. It's very enjoyable. <laughs> it is very and cheesy. It's very cheesy. It was a little bit boring for a bit there in the middle. Oh, fuck and it yeah. Lost, it, was, it was very, very aimless, Paul. It's very directionless. <laughs> didn't know what it was doing for the most part. Well, but um, it sometimes rem- that really worked. Sometimes it did. It reminded me of like an old Twilight Zone episode, except I was waiting mm. for the twist. You know, I was waiting mm. for, my God, this was actually Earth. Yeah. Or, um, good Lord, the beast was trying to warn us. You know, yeah. just something like <laughs> yeah. whatever this is. Like, it's a cloning facility. It, whatever. Just a mm. twist. But none were coming. <laughs> what you saw was what you got. You get everything. Film. Everything gets set up in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. And then it just plays out. <laughs> exactly, exactly as promised. <laughs> um, as they told you it would. The astronauts killed the beast <laughs> and everyone's fine forever. There was, yeah, I was, it was just a, it was a marvel in silly decisions. And, you know, from the the crazy long sequence of the assistant coming into that scene to take a 10 Fucking word hell. note. That was very and then her exit. To me. That was where I was hoping for Manos, you know, because yeah. that was great. And it never yeah. quite aspires to the. Um, humor and creativity yeah. the creative terribleness of Manos but it does have a couple of moments where the incompetence does overwhelm the senses I, I really love the, the, the silence after they try and scare off the beast as well they're the two yeah. moments that really had me in <laughs> like, hysterics yeah <laughs> just wonderful that and London um, airport was <laughs> very oh good oh god yeah we didn't really <laughs> properly explain that at the beginning of the movie the first real piece of information communicated to us After, apart from the fact that it gives us a subtitle for New York just to uh, yeah. whilst the plane is flying over New York it then lands in yeah. London airport <laughs> not an airport in London no. it's a sign it's a sign that says London airport <laughs> which is great <clears throat> it really is it really um, bespeaks a tremendous amount of effort. And but at the, the same time, I actually, I, what's the one thing that stood out to me, uh, whether it was intentional or not? Mm. This film had a lot of really effective silences. Yeah, I think it's, so. <laughs> at the moments where it wasn't just awkwardly blaring the fucking classical soundtrack they'd managed to procure at you, yeah. occasionally allowing the track to finish and then start up again, Birdemic style. Yeah. <laughs> But there was lots of space, you know, space related scenes where yep. people were just staring at each other nervously, waiting for the rocket to go off and uh-huh. things like that. And there's a bit in there where they say, Count down, prepare for countdown in one minute. And then they proceed to film the entire minute of people just going, <laughs> oh no. And it's, for me, it's just on the right side of the line there. That could have just been fucking ridiculous. Yeah. But it actually made me go, it's pretty tense going up to that space would, there. That would be a great scene in a spoof where it's like, one minute to countdown. And then everyone just sits there for exactly one minute of actual time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. So it, it did do a couple of things like that well, and the black and yeah. white got across that, the, the, the void, the endless void of space. And yeah. the, the monochrome does allow for that, that rich texture sometimes. Yeah, um, agreed. Everything else is just, just hilarity and <laughs> crabness. Yeah, I think it was so. pretty sublime. It's not the most entertaining B movie I've ever seen, but it has its moments. And yeah. hey, let's talk about those moments now. Let's, uh, let's quick fire. Quick fire. I did like the plane going over the city. Yeah. With the landing gear, like POV shot. It was probably stock footage, but mm. I mean, it's hard to actually film a plane moving so gracefully yeah. back then. I think I could only imagine they had a parallel plane and were filming from that. Yeah. But it's probably stock footage, but it looked good. Maybe because it was stock footage and it yeah. wasn't directed by <laughs> F. Gary Cy Roth. Abrahamson or whatever this guy's name is. <laughs> Man of movies, Cy Roth. Well, that was he, it, yeah. Movie man. 
<laughs> no, movie. not movie man. Man of movies. <laughs> movie Marvel, say <same> rough. <laughs> Seen here, landing in Hollywood with his <laughs> glamorous young wife and assistant. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> yeah, that whole that whole opening before the music comes in, there's just the diegetic sound of the plane taking off, and yeah, it was good. It, if like at the beginning of a good film, that would have yeah yeah set a very sort of moody, contemplative, I'd high uh, hopes atmosphere. I really enjoyed the the chat about one of the moons looking like the Earth. Um, mm. When one scientist just goes, um, it's just everything that the fifties was for me. And they go, do you, <laughs> do you share my conclusions? What that it looks like the Earth? And he pops his pipe back in his mouth smugly. It does. <laughs> <laughs> That's that sorted. <laughs> Good. Get on with the rest of the film. Agreed. Us gentlemen have decided this. They they start joking about it, and then their response is, "Stop kidding around. You're a scientist." <laughs> just, yes, thank you. Yes, I am a scientist. That's a good point, You're fellow right. scientist. <laughs> you are also a scientist. Thank you. So I am. No more jokes. Oh yeah, near the end, the beast looks fucking ridiculous throughout, but at the very yeah. end. When he's approaching the sacrificial chamber and he's the, he's backlit, very imposing in the shadows, and there's just all you can really make out is his silhouette, including his awkwardly kind of lumpy, scary head. It looks like it's got like yeah. bits hanging off of it and sticking out. It's it is actually quite creepy. Yeah. So it it just goes to That's show cool. any any movie monster really can be effective if it's shot in the right way, and they yeah. accidentally stumble across that. After Canon shut down their fucking movie studio. <laughs> like, this, the shot of the rocket landing, you know, it was just taking off in reverse. Yeah. It was rubbish, but I really enjoyed that they did that. <laughs> God bless. And, you know, when they land, it cuts back to the scientists, who I realised at that point were at no point wearing spacesuits. <laughs> immediately <laughs> immediately <laughs> just smile and start slapping each other on the back and passing around cigarettes. It's just fucking glorious. I love the line when they get out onto the planet. Um, to oh, Paul, the look on your face tells me the atmosphere on Jupiter's 13th moon is similar to that on Earth. <laughs> and then any sweet, please smile to confirm it. It's just lovely. That's great. Oh, <laughs> It is. Not not dying, not asphyxiating in endless space. Just, Thank you. It's such a great sort of notion of, I can see from your face that the oxygen on the 13th moon of Jupiter is similar to that of Earth. What does that face look like? <laughs> <laughs> can you pull it in any situation? Oh, that face. How context specific is this facial expression of yours? <laughs> Are you okay, honey? You Fuck. you look like the thirteenth moon of Jupiter is, <laughs> has a comparable atmosphere to that of Earth. Yeah, sorry, I've just <laughs> had a rough week. I had a rough week. I found out that the atmosphere on the thirteenth moon of Jupiter isn't. <laughs> but... Pulling this face ever since. <laughs> I know the five scientists are all basically the same dude, but there was a James Dean looking <laughs> motherfucker in there. There was the, the Tim Blake Nelson experience. There's some of them. <laughs> a I... full Tim Blake Nelson experience. Wow. <laughs> You didn't even have to pay for it because it was on YouTube. <laughs> as, uh, as usual, fans, any movie we cover before the year 1980 is available <laughs> in its fucking entirety on YouTube. <laughs> and I'm so glad for that. Because I got you to watch this. That. I went to work early just so I could watch this when no one else was around. And I wasn't rushed because <laughs> I, was, I was already at work. And I was just paying more attention than I usually would to films. And I think it just made me, helped me enjoy it more. <laughs> um, Excellent. I watched it in the hour before we started recording. Which had its usual effect. Supoib. <laughs> um, oh boy! <laughs> but your boy, mister. Certainly. So yeah, when it does cut to the scientists discussing the mad Atlantis leader under their breath, this is just after it's a hard cut to him going over to the portrait of the goddess of Atlantis and going, Oh, goddess of Atlantis! And then it cuts again to the scientist and he can clearly be heard holding forth in the background like, under the volume of these guys <laughs> going, I think he's got a screw loose. <laughs> I knew a guy like this in the army. <laughs> When when the guy wakes up and he's silently coerced to drink the sleeping draft, mm. it's it's all told in facial expressions, and I thought that was a cool little bit of storytelling. That, that was a surprise in this film. <laughs> and yeah, finally, just one of the I'll try a gas grenade, and then he throws it. It's like I'll try a gas grenade, throw, thunk, oh, <laughs> kaboom, hard cut, <laughs> back to the thing, sudden noises, <laughs> perfect, perfect exchange, and that's me done. I'm out. Fantastic. Did we manage to get anything out of the OG team? Well, despite having uh, no experience with the movie, Aussie nerds wade waded into the fray. Excellent. Knew we could rely on him. It came out in a time when people put a lot of effort into the posters. Plus, B-Monster movies is my favourite genre, so I think I'll dig it, now that I know it exists. <laughs> and you know what? If we can make people realise or accept that this exists, <laughs> I, think we've, I think we've done our job. Finally come to terms with the fact that this is out there. On YouTube for free. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think you might, and I'll be curious if you can get back to us and let us know. Yeah, I'd recommend watching it. Yeah, I it's think kind so. Of fun. I mean, it's pretty short. It's now in twenty minutes, and it's uh, yeah, it's about as entertaining as a middling gore house grade. You know, it's not up there. It's not up there with the fucking um, what were the last couple called? Devil Hands and uh, Blood Manias, but it's pretty. Oh, yeah. It's pretty fun. <laughs> I don't resent watching it. That's for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ah. Uh. All right, oh, thanks. God, thanks, OG Tom. Thanks, OG Team. G, thanks, OG Team. <laughs> OG Team, on the case. <laughs> Imagine an OG Team <laughs> that had never seen the movie. Imagine an OG Team. But they were the movie all along. Imagine a team of people dedicated to celebrating a couple of pulls at the end of their rope. They're about to <laughs> learn that it's a long way down to the bottom of a barrel at the end of a gun on the wrong end of the law, and they're going to find that out. And the OGT. Target high. <laughs> oh, cool. Christ. What was your one better thing? The one better thing. I, th- I thought, you know, I was thinking about the uh, the black and white nothingness of space. Um, mm. The contemplative nature of that. And it had me thinking of films that communicate that well nowadays. Mm. You've got Interstellar, 2001, you know, nowadays. Sunshine <laughs> and so on. But The First Man is really... Oh, Saturated with that contemplation, Damien Chazelle's yeah. uh, latest Ryan Gosling a thong, a thong <laughs> about Neil Armstrong doing a space, and you know it's um could have been Miles Teller. It's, it's used, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if things had turned out differently, the first yeah, the first man to walk on Miles Teller. <laughs> yeah, the the contemplation there, the the going bravely into the unknown is is very well communicated in this, and it's yeah. a, it's a really beautiful contemplative piece of cinema yeah it's sort of it's stuck with me and it's hmm. it's it's never going to be one of those films that's that the wow wowed me but i have such a soft spot for it because it's a really beautiful piece yeah and it's just it's very well done the landing scene on the on the moon yeah. um, spoilers is, <laughs> is really well done yeah and it's very well realized so yeah no sexy wenches on the moon or anything or on mars teller but that's liberal hollywood for you yeah fuck it i one bullshit if you ask me but um, yeah, and it's also got that great Justin Hurwitz score. I um, mean, oh, yeah. the track "The Landing" is something that I just regularly listen to now. It's um really wonderful. And actually, I'd be curious to see a version of the interstellar docking scene with that music put to it. Oh yeah, I feel like there'd be quite a complimentary track there. What are you doing? Docking. Endurance rotation is 67, 68 RPM. Okay, get ready to match our spin with the retro thrusters. It's not possible. No, it's necessary. The fir- first man is fantastic, and it also manages to articulate that feeling, which is in here a little bit, of just the sheer wonder of space exploration. Mm-hmm. The fantastic sort of joy of going some brand new place and exploring what's there. Mm. Wenches. <laughs> um... I'm going to stay in the 50s for my one better thing, and I've been thinking mm. about all of the terrific science fiction movies that came out in that time. Movies like The Day the Earth Stood Still, Invaders from Mars, This Planet, uh, This Island Earth, I should say. Uh, it Came From mm. Outer Space, uh, mm. Them, which was about the giant ants. Mm. It's all fantastic. Uh, Forbidden Planet, of course, featuring a pre-comedy Leslie Nielsen, which is always good fun. Oh, great. Um Invasion of the Body Snatchers is one of the fucking great movies. Um, oh, who was the director there? Don Siegel was the director there Tana. before his sort of Western days. So mm. that's good stuff. But I'm actually going to recommend um, the incredibly, the incredible Shrinking Man, the incredibly Shrinking Man, <laughs> um, made a year after this. And again, it's about a journey into the unknown, but it's about the sort of Ant Man style ma- microverse that he's traveling into. Mm. It's about a man who's um, on a boat of his best gal, who's yeah. who's below deck. And an atomic bomb goes off. Oh no! Fuck. And that that crazy bastard messes around with his atoms. Uh, the girl's okay because she was below deck, and as we all know, boats will protect you from an atomic <laughs> radiation. It's the Indiana Jones school of radiation. <laughs> um, so she's fine, but he, because of those crazy atoms that have gone loopy through his system, <laughs> is starting to shrink. He's getting shorter every day. Incredibly, you might and say. Uh, yeah, unbelievably, implausibly. Um, He's getting shorter all the time. And it starts off as a sort of, uh, he becomes a bit of a media phenomenon as he becomes, you know, perfectly proportioned, but incredibly tiny. Mm -hmm. Um, But he keeps getting smaller and smaller until eventually he can't, his wife loses him one day and he ends up in the basement of his house. And that's where the movie kind of really kicks in. 
because he has to now try and survive the basement and he's pitted against the house cat um as he continues to get small other spiders he's got to forge swords out of like little uh pins and safety pins and the special effects are you know occasionally cut hokey when you've got like big classic yeah. spiders but sometimes really good you know they do a mm. really good job of production design they design like a giant tape measure for him to be beside mm-hmm. you know and all these little inventive ways in which he's got to try and traverse his surroundings and it has a really poignant ending in which he has to face the idea of him gradually shrinking out of existence and he has mm. this great monologue at the end about him becoming the sort of the literally the world's smallest conscious being and yet also a part of literally everything and it's kind of humbling god so yeah i really recommend the incredible shrinking man i think it's one wow. of the best sci-fi movies of the wow. 50s oh well <laughs> give it a javid harris style i fuck <laughs> i was trying to do a christopher walk and it didn't come out wow <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Hello, I'm almost... Christopher Walken. <laughs> yeah, so nice yeah, I recommend checking it out. That sounds great. Oh, and it's based on a Richard Matheson novel as well. Oh, Those forget it. Was grim. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> I hate him. There's also some moments which are just cheesy and great. Like, he's living in a dollhouse at one stage. Yeah. And there's a bit where he just opens the door to his dollhouse and there's just a roaring cat's face <laughs> taking up the entirety of the door. And it's it's kind of cheesy, a lot of fun, and... Yeah, surprisingly meaningful. Beautiful. Check it out. Yeah, I'll probably I'll do it, I think. The one better thing. How are people going to find out about the OG? Paul, how are people going to find out about the one good theme? About the one good thing, even. How are people going to How are people going to find out about the one good thing when when we're shrinking ever more in, <laughs> out, into obsolescence? In terms of our stature, certainly. Yeah. Our online presence I mean, is literally shrinking by the day. I mean, I know we're both becoming more um, radically conservative by the second, so <laughs> um, it's it, it, we haven't got long on the internet, mate. <laughs> Immigrants are okay by me for now. A wink. <laughs> <laughs> Think about the services. <laughs> so, um. In, but in, in, until that point, you can find us and our inc- incredibly shrinking podcast balls. Oh, this is this is a hungover recording. <laughs> Didn't need the drill to fuck up this one. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, guys. Um, I got this. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook at OGT Pod. You can sign. You can sign us an email. Fuck yes. <laughs> sign us an email, guys. Sign it yourselves. We'll know if you've used a digital signature. <laughs> sign that email. Get the pen out on your monitor. And then you've got to, it to us. you've got to complete the capture In, exactly which which frames are can you see Tyler Durden's enormous penis <laughs> which ones tick them all <laughs> all of them I oh, know you're definitely a robot a robot wouldn't have answered um yeah so all that uh Facebook OGT pods Twitter OGT pods OGT pod at gmail dot com oh god I'm I'm failing here Paul I'm crashing and burning <laughs> like, um, you get the idea load the last episode and listen to the end of that it's yeah. all in there like we recorded fucking work in for once we recorded god, that about it. 20 minutes ago anyway so look, if you just <laughs> listen to them back to back it'll be fine we did we did it really well about an hour ago guys um, look, we all know you skip the end of these episodes anyway so just give it a minute and pop in or spool to the next one to the last point you listened and it will be just before the last time we did this everyone else is cycling to work and just just can't stop to take the head <laughs> to throw their this? earphones into for a the car. love of god let me hit some lights soon so i can skip this shit please <laughs> For all those people, thanks and apologies. And um... <laughs> just kidding, cyclists in London, you can't stop at the red lights. <laughs> You're not allowed. Cycle law demands it. <laughs> not, not London for me. Cycle law. Not my road law. <laughs> I'm a pedestrian as well. <laughs> Best of both worlds. <laughs> I can be anything I want to be. <laughs> Ow, my foot. <laughs> anything. <laughs> I love being a cyclist. It really is just. I don't think this red light is for me. Actually, I can. Not, I'll just take this not corner. Me. <laughs> just this corner. Just this one. And the next one. I don't think I need to look back at cars. <laughs> not like cars do. They're looking out for me. <laughs> me, the cyclist. <laughs> so yeah, for yeah all anything. of that. Um, <laughs> Oh, and listeners that. at home, you can be anything you want to be. And that includes uh, an honorary member of the OG team. <laughs> By just just li- listen out because. Yeah, we'll, we'll ask for you soon. Yeah, there's and, all you know, sorts of ways. Just keep an eye. Yeah, keep an eye out. Yeah, go on. Please do. And one day, because our listen, our listener to OG team ratio is really skewed. In, <laughs> you know, it it is not representative of our listener listening stats. So, um, <laughs> so many of you are listening to these out there in the dark, alone, scared, yeah. wondering about the others that are out there. Come into the light. Tell us what you like about 
fire maidens from outer space. You will be warmly received, I promise. <laughs> we probably won't insult you. Not like Sean Flow, which we did last week. <laughs> Fuck that guy. You're better than him. All of you. Yeah. We want you to prove it by writing in. Yeah, come on. Come on, guys. Don't let Sean win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gonna get more more texts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to have Sean on the episode. Oh, well, we can't wait. We can, we can address we'll our, see. our grievances in person. <laughs> Because re- really, guys, I'm a fucking coward, and uh, I avoid conflict <laughs> like the plague. <laughs> no, you don't. Um, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah. He's cool. Got any- anything else? Uh, <laughs> you got any other lines? Uh, f- knock, knock? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm Paul Salt. <laughs> I-, I guess you're right. <laughs> and remember, the one good thing about the Fire Maidens from Outer Space is that you really just can't keep a good 50s man down. You certainly can't get the cigarette out of his hand. Sean on the episode. Sean on the episode. Sean on the episode. Sean on the episode.